The year is 1930. Cadillac needed a V12 to compete with Pierce Arrow, Packard, Lincoln, who all had V12s. It's also worth mentioning, Cadillac also decided to one-up those brands by making a V16 in 1930 as well. Both the V12 and V16 are overhead valve configurations. They look very similar to one another. Both the 12 and the V16 were designed by the same man, Owen Knacker. Cadillac's V12 was a 45 degree bank angle and it was essentially the V16 with four cylinders removed. The stroke is the same, but uses a slightly bigger bore over the V16. Common misconception about the number of cylinders back then was more cylinders equals more power, but that's not true. More cylinders equals more smoothness. Also, each bank of cylinders acts as its own individual engine with one crankshaft. The V12 featured hydraulic valve silencers for that whisper quiet operation, and it used oil pressure to automatically reset valve lash at zero, which was an industry first. Cast iron cylinder blocks with aluminum crank case. 368 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V12, six liters. It's good for 135 horsepower, 3,400 RPM, 240 pound feet or 325 Newton meters at 1800 RPM, which is an estimate. Bore of 3.1 inches and a stroke of four inches. Compression is 520 to one. Four main bearings, 1935 saw a power bump pushing power from 135 horsepower up to 150 horsepower came courtesy of a compression bump. Compression was now six to one. Years this engine was used. It was used from 1931 through 1937. In 1937, Cadillac would pull the plug on the V12. The new 346 monoblock V8 was making 135 horsepower plus weighed less and was cheaper to produce. But the weird move was they decided to redesign the V16. If you'd like to know more about the V16 story, we covered it in this engine episode. But the Cadillac V12 story doesn't end in 1937. Cadillac came so close to having a single overhead cam V12 in the late 60s. Six prototypes were made in 63 and 64. The engine was to have a 60 degree bank angle, which is the preferred angle on a V12. Chain driven camshaft with hydraulic finger followers, displacements of 7.4 liters and 8.2 liters. Different induction systems were tried, single four barrel carburetor, dual quads and tri-quads, as well as fuel injection. The engine made anywhere between 295 to 394 horsepower, 418 to 506 pound feet. The engine was supposed to be used on the front wheel drive Eldorado. The program was killed because of poor performance in the test engines. Plus emissions probably would have ultimately killed this engine. It was the V12 that never was. It's also worth mentioning around 2007, Cadillac teased this with an all new V12, 7.5 liters, power said to be around 600 horsepower, 540 pound feet, but it was only a concept car. It's super crazy when you stop and think about it that Cadillac only made one V12 in its entire existence for the public. And that was only available from the years 1931 through 1937. Anyway, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1931 Cadillac V12 or 1934 Cadillac V12 or 1936 Cadillac V12? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for the second scenario, 1937 Cadillac V12 or 1932 Cadillac V12 or 1935 Cadillac V12. Once again, going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of it.
Thank you all so much for coming out here and watching this short episode. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted, and I don't say that for self-worth. I just say that if you post something on here, I will read it. We have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. It gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, pictures, experiences. Anything that you'd like to share on there, it, as long as it's car related, is a go. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of it, all that information will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in this car community. And until next time, toodaloo! Boy said my name is Johnny and it might be a sin, but I'll take your bet you're going to regret because I'm the best there's ever been.